the only example we're really going to look at here is we're going to have a look at what effect does each of the following transformations have on the graph of y equals x squared. Um, so we're going to go through each of these. Some of them we're going to do in kind of one crack and the other ones we're going to look at individually. Uh, so the first one we're going to have and explore and think about what about these ones here. So first thing I'm going to do is just grab my calculator up. Here it is and I'm going to put my x squared into my y1. Now the two uh, transformations that I'm going to start off by looking at is firstly what happens if we have our y1, um, so I'm going to access my y1 in my function editor by going alpha and then pressing the trace button, which is that F4 quick keys. Um, and this has all of my y variables in it. So I can pull in that y1. And now I can adjust my function that's written in my y1 spot into my y2. So in this one, I'm looking at what happens if we take negative x and plug that into our y1 instead of having positive x. So let's have a look. We're going to graph these ones together on the screen. I'm just going to make sure my zoom is set up um, correctly. I would like, um, I think I just want a standard zoom. Well, actually, let's know. Let's do a zoom fit. Um, so that one's down there, zero. Okay, so zoom fit. There we go, we can see that really nicely. All right, so there's our screen. Um, and what you can see there is that we only have one graph showing up. What is happening? Um, well, what's happening here is that because our original function is x squared, we take a negative and we plug that into x squared, we just output the exact same value. Um, and we can have a bit of a better look at this as well um, if we wanted to explore this by looking at our table too. So let's go second. Um, and then press the graph button again and we can bring up our table and we can see that whatever we have put into y1 we get the exact same value in y2. Okay back into my y equals and this time instead of looking at um, what happens when we put in negative x into y1 I'm going to look, see what happens when we make the whole of y1 negative. So in this case we're going to have negative again alpha f4 to bring up y1 um, and we're just going to have a standard positive x put in there. Okay, so now let's graph this one. And again, we're going to have to use um, a slightly different zoom here. So again, I'm going to use that zoom fit that's under zero. And there we go. We can see our two graphs here. Okay, so we've got a bit of, a little bit of a difference here. So turning points at the same place. Um, if we look at that table again, we can see that our numbers are the same, but everything in Y2 is negative whereas everything in y1 is positive. So what's happening here is this transformation is causing a reflection um, in our original function about that x-axis. So we're getting um, the, exactly the same image, but just reflected around that axis. Back into y equals again, and what we're gonna have a look at this time is what happens when we add or subtract a value into our function. So the first one is we're gonna, I'm just gonna delete that negative there. And I'm going to look at what happens when we've got y1 of x and we add um, 1 to that value. Um, and then I'm also at the same time, on the same screen, I'm going to look at, um, again, alpha f4 to bring in y1 again. I want to see what happens when I add 1 to my x value within the bracket. So we're adding 1, but just in a slightly different place um, in our function. So again, first one's added on as a constant onto the end third one's added to that x value, and then you're computing the function after that. Um, again, we're going to graph that. Okay, I'm going to use my zoom fit again for this one. Um, and I might actually even, because um, I want to see what's happening a little bit closer to the axis there, so I'm going to set up my window settings a little bit different. So I'm going to keep my x min and my x max the same, but I just want to have a look at the y values. So I'm going to decrease my y min down to negative 10 because I want to get a nice view about what's happening below the axis. And my y max, I'm just going to bring that up to 20 um, and I'm going to change my y scale down to 1. Um, so now when I press graph, lovely, we get a bit of a better idea there about what's happening in our turning point. Um, so we can see the first one, this was the one, remember when we added just one value onto our, um, as a constant onto the end of the function, we can see that turning point's been shifted one unit up. So our graph has the exact same shape, um, but it's just been shifted one unit 
um, vertically. Uh, our, set, our other one here, that was where we added the one onto the x. So we can see the turning point there. Again, our function still has the exact same shape, but it's just been shifted one unit across to the left. Now I want to do a little bit of a deeper dive and see what see um, whether the conjectures that I've kind of made so far hold for some different values that I might want to add on to. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to head into my main screen and I'm going to go into my statistics editor um, and into my list one I've got some, some values entered there. So 2, 4, 7 and 9, I just pick those at random. You could pick any numbers, you could have a mixture of positive and negative, you could have some fractions if you wanted to, you could have absolutely anything you like, but I've just picked four numbers at random. Um, then I'm going to go into my y equals and instead of adding on just one at the end, I'm going to add on my whole list one and that's going to give me four different graphs on the screen um, and each of those are going to have um, a different value added on based on what number was in that list. I'm going to do the same thing with my y3 as well so I'm going to add on this one instead of the one um, but I don't want to be looking at all of these at the one time because that's going to give me nine graphs um, it's a bit too much to look at so I'm just going to turn off my y3 for the moment and I'm just going to look at the one y1 and the y2 um, again, in case you didn't get that, uh, to turn that off, I just pressed enter on the equal sign. So I'm going to graph that. There we go. So there's my five graphs. There's my original, just my x squared. There's my x squared plus two, my x squared plus four, x squared plus seven, and my x squared. And again, the same shape for each of those graphs, um, the turning point and uh, each of the coordinates have just been shifted up by the amount that we added on there. Um, now I'm just going to go into my back into my y equals. I'm going to turn off that y2 and turn on my y3, just hitting the enter button on that equal side again to turn it on. And I'm going to graph that. And again, I'm going to get my five graphs there. And I can see as well, same exact same shape for each of these. Um, but again, they've just been shifted to the left by whatever value we added on to that x value. So um, my new turning point here is at um, negative 2, 0. Then I have another one at negative 4, 0. Another one at negative 7, 0 and a negative 9, 0. So again, it's just been shifted to the left, um, causing that translation there. All right, well, that's me for today. Um, I hope you guys have a great time. I'll see you next time.